Shalom, my name is Alicia Israel. I am the Marae or spiritual teacher of the House of Israel located at 3546 Montgomery Road in Everston. Today I have the honor and privilege of introducing to many of you all for the first time the true word of Yahweh. It cannot be too often emphasized that the Holy Scriptures or the so-called Old Testament of the Bible is the only true history of our people in the world. Everything that has ever happened to us, everything that is happening, and everything that will ever happen to us as a people is recorded in the Holy Scriptures of your Bible. Today, I'm going to speak on who is the original descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. A lot of people have been calling in and writing and asking me to explain who are the original house of Israel. First of all, I would like you all to turn to the book of Amos, the third chapter, the second verse, or third chapter, the seventh verse. It is recorded in Amos, the third chapter, the seventh verse that surely Yahweh Elohim will do nothing, but he reveals his secrets unto his servants, the prophets. Meaning that everything that the Almighty will ever do pertaining to us, he will reveal unto one of his servants, the prophets. So the Almighty at this time will reveal to many of you all who are the original house of Israel. According to the book of Amos, the third chapter, the first and the second verse, it reads as follows. Hear this word that Yahweh has spoken against you, O children of Israel, against the whole family which I brought up out of the land of Egypt. In other words, we find out that in this scripture, as well as all of the original holy scriptures, which is recorded in the Old Testament of your Bibles, that this is Yahweh speaking. It reads, Thus said Yahweh, or the word of Yahweh came unto me. You will not see this duplicated anywhere in the New Testament of your Bible. For the Almighty does not speak in the New Testament of your Bible. The word of Yahweh can only be found recorded in the original Holy Scriptures, and that is what you might call the Old Testament of the Bible. But we read, as here the Almighty states that he's speaking to the house of Israel. The reason that the Almighty is speaking exclusively to the house of Israel is because the house of Israel is the only church, the only people, the only congregation or convocation or holy assembly that is recorded in the Holy Scriptures of your Bible. This is the Almighty's church. This is His people. And the Almighty tells His people in the second verse of Amos, the third chapter, that you only have I known of all the families of the earth. Therefore will I punish you for your iniquities. You only means you exclusively. Or the only people have I known. Therefore will I punish you for your iniquities. This is the reason that you know we are the house of Israel. Many people have asked me that if we are truly the original children of Israel, then why are we suffering in the manner that we are today? Why are we constantly the ones that are being punished? Why don't we have a land? Why don't we have a king? Why aren't we rich? Why are we constantly discriminated and exploited and subjugated and mistreated by all the other nations on the earth. Why are we not recognized in America? Why are we not recognized in Asia? And why do many of our fellow African brothers mistreat us and don't recognize us as a people? Why? The answer is because we are the original house of Israel. The Almighty prophesied all these things to come upon us and to occur with us. That is why you know that we are the original house of Israel because we are the only nation that is being punished 
right here, right now on earth for all of our iniquities by the various plagues, the various signs, the various wonders, and the various curses that are written within the book of life. As reading the Almighty said, You only have I known of all the families of the earth, therefore will I punish you for all of your iniquities. That's the reason we are being punished for our iniquities, because we are Yahweh's chosen people. Furthermore, if you turn to the book of Proverbs, the third chapter, you will read in Proverbs, the third chapter, starting at the 11th verse, that it said, My son, despise not the chastisement of Yahweh, neither be weary of his correction. For whom Yahweh loveth, he will correct as a father and the son in whom he has delighted. In other words, if you have a son in whom you are delighted in, that you're well pleased in, when your son walks in error against you, you will correct him. Just as you would correct a tree trying to attempt to let it grow straight. If it's bending one way to the right or to the left, you will correct it. And this is what the Almighty said about his chosen people. If he love you, he will correct you. That's the reason a wicked man can do anything. And the more wicked he becomes, the more he will increase in his riches because Yahweh has turned his back from that individual. But many of you all today that will try to do and commit the same iniquities that the wicked man will commit, you will find out that Yahweh will chastise you. And he's not chastising you because he hates you, but he's chastising you because he loves you and he wants to correct you to bring you back into his arms and into his fold. That's the reason Yahweh will, will correct you. And that's the reason that we know that we are the original children of Israel is because we are the only people that are a recipient of all the various curses that are written in the book of life that the Almighty stated that he would allow to misfall us if we turned away from him and began to commit iniquity. One of the things that the Father stated he would do is to have our name taken away. We would not know our name. And truly today, we are the only people on the earth that don't know their name, don't know their nationality. Every other nation does. But if you get ten so-called Negroes and put them in a room and ask each of them their nationality, they will give you ten different answers. One of them will tell you he's an Afro-American. Another will tell you that he's an Asiatic black man. Another one will tell you that he's a Negro. Another one will tell you that he's an Afro-American. Another one will tell you he's a black man. Another one will tell you this, and another one will tell you that, and so on and so forth. But collectively, although we are some of the most educated people in America, although many of us are doctors and lawyers, when you ask these so-called educated blacks about their nationality, they can't tell you. And that is a shame. And it is only a shame because the Almighty prophesies that it would occur if we would not return unto him, and if we would break his laws, statutes, covenants, and commandments that are written in the book of life. We know this to be true by having you turn to the book of Psalms, the 83rd chapter. According to Psalms, the 83rd chapter, we find, starting at the first verse, it reads as follows. Keep not Thou silent, O Elohim, hold not thy peace, and be not still, O Elohim. For lo, thy enemies make a turmoil, and they that hate thee, <coughs> meaning the people that hate Yahweh, and yes, many heathens hate Yahweh. That's the reason if you tell them that Yahweh is your creator, Yahweh is your Elohim, or Yahweh is your God, you will offend many of them because they have replaced Yahweh with Jesus or Halas Selassie. That's the reason our people are now serving idols instead of the Creator. That is the definition of the word idolatry, the worship of idols. And any time you idolize a man, a person, or thing, you make that person, that thing, a, a, an idol or a god or a devil 
And the Almighty admonished us continuously throughout the book of life <coughs> never to worship, never to call upon anyone, never to pray to anyone, never to sing to anyone, never to rejoice over anyone except himself. But you see, still until this very day, not only have our fathers sinned against Yahweh, and that's the reason that we're in this pitiful condition today, but even until this very day, we ourselves have turned our back on the only true and living Creator, the only one that could save us. Our enemies have deceived and told us that if we worship someone else, his son or his daughter or his nephew, that they would save us. But the Creator stated in the book that He is our Savior and there is none else beside Him. And you can find this mentioned in Isaiah, the 43rd chapter, the 10th and 11th verse. Furthermore, as we read in Psalms 83rd chapter, the third verse, it reads, They have taken crafty counsel against thy people, meaning the children of Israel, who are the original seed of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob who are the original sons of Yahweh. They have taken crafty counsel against thy people and have consulted against the hidden ones. They have said, Come and let us cut them off from being a nation, that the name of Israel shall be no more in remembrance. And that's the reason we don't know our nationality today. Many of you all that regard yourself religiously and spiritually as Christians are re in reality Israelites by birth. Many of the various groups that call themselves Muslims today because that is the religion or walk of life that you chose for yourself. Little did you know that you are an Israelite by birth but you cannot read the Holy Quran and find out your nationality. You cannot read the Holy Quran and read about how we were chased out of our own land because of our disobedience and where the Almighty prophesied to send us into the land of our enemies, where we would serve our enemies for 400 years, as it is prophesied in the book of Genesis, the 15th chapter, the 13th verse. You would not read about our people being black with woolly hair. You would not read about anyone redeeming us from the land of our bondage in the last days, because the things that I speak unto you are not recorded in the Holy Quran or any other book outside of the Holy Scriptures which happen to be the Old Testament of the Bible. Our whole history is in here, the history of our fathers, the history of their sons, and the history of everything that will happen to us before, now, and hereafter are recorded in this book of life. So regardless what religious affiliation you might consider yourselves, you would consider yourselves very wise if you would familiarize yourselves with the Holy Scriptures of your Bible because the word of Yahweh is the only thing that can save you out of this predicament that our people are in today. And the Almighty stated in the book of Isaiah, or should I say in the book of Psalms, the 83rd chapter, the 4th verse, that they would cut us off from being a nation. The reason that they were allowed or our enemies were allowed to cut us off from being a nation that the name of Israel would never be no more in remembrance is because we have sinned against our true and living Elohim. We know this to be true by referring you to the book of Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter. <clears throat> According to the book of Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter, Starting at the, the 14th and 15th verse, the Almighty mentions various blessings that would befall us if we kept His commandments. And then the Creator started speaking at the 15th verse onward and would begin to tell us various things that would happen to us if we forsook the commandments of our true and living Elohim and began to break His covenants, His laws, His statutes, and His commandments. And one of the things that the Creator stated would happen to us is recorded in Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter, the 37th verse. It reads as follows. And thou shalt become an astonishment, a proverb, and a byword amongst all the nations 
whether Yahweh shall lead thee, meaning that we would become an astonishment. And what is an astonishment? An astonishment is when people look at you and the shape that you are in as a people and say, how could a people that could assume that they are so hip, they are so slick, that know all the latest dances, know how to sing all the latest songs, but nevertheless they don't even know who they are. They don't as a people know their nationality. How could a people be in this predicament? What have they done and what is their sin that they have committed for their God to have put them in the terrible position that they're in today? And what position is that? Is that we would become an astonishment, a proverb, and a byword. And that is truly what the word Negro means. The word nigger or Negro means a proverb and a byword. No people are named from a Spanish word or a Latin word or from a river. But my enemies knew who we were when they took our identity away from us. When they destroyed us from being a people, one of the ways they destroyed us is by taking our identity, our nationality, our language, and our culture from us. And then, as Almighty had prophesied, they destroyed us from being a people. And then we became a proverb and a byword. Every nation on this earth, as I stated, every nation on this earth can relate who they are and distinguish who they are by showing you their nationality or the land of their nativity. Furthermore, I would like you to turn to 1 Kings, the ninth chapter. 1 Kings, the ninth chapter. I would like to start reading at the, the sixth verse. It's, it, it begins to read in 1 Kings, the ninth chapter, starting at the sixth verse, it reads as follows. But if ye shall at all turn from fallen me, ye are your children, and will not keep my commandments and my statutes, which I set before you, but go and serve other gods and worship them, then will I cut Israel off of the land which I have given them and this house which I have hallowed for my name will I cast out of my sight and Israel shall be a proverb and a byword amongst all people and at this house which is very high everyone that pass it shall be astonished and shall hiss and they shall say, Why has Yahweh done thus unto this land and into this house? And they shall answer, Because they forsook Yahweh the Elohim, who brought forth their fathers out of the land of Egypt, and have taken hold of other gods, and served them, and worshipped them. Therefore Yahweh brought them all of this evil. In other words, the reason that you and your fathers and your mothers are in the position that they are today in America is because we have turned our back on the true and living Elohim when we were in his land. We began to serve other gods. And because he loved us and wanted to correct us, this is a type of punishment that the Almighty stated and prophesied that he would do unto us if we continued serving false gods even as we do this very day. He said he would take us out of our land and put us into the land of our enemies where we would have to serve strangers even until the last day. And then he himself would regain us and bring us back home. Another question that people might ask to distinguish who Israel is, they might say, is there anywhere in the Bible where it is prophesied that Israel would have their language taken away? You can furthermore find this in the book of Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter. According to the book of Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter, starting at the 48th verse, it reads as follows. 
I'll start at the 47th verse. It reads, Because thou servest not Yahweh the Elohim with joyfulness and with gladness of heart for the abundance of all things, therefore shall thou serve thy enemy, which Yahweh shall sin against thee in hunger and in thirst and in nakedness and in want of all things. And he should put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until he has destroyed thee. And this is what happened during the so-called plantation days when we were in rural plantations instead of the urban plantation where we remain this day, that they had a yoke of iron upon our neck. And Yahweh, our Elohim, allowed our enemies to put a yoke of iron upon our neck until he has destroyed us from being a people. And this is exactly what they did. When they brought our fair parents over here, they separated the young men from the old, from the youngsters. They separated the children from their parents. And they would not allow the children to communicate with their parents that they might be able to understand their language, their culture, and their heritage nor to have any knowledge about their true Elohim. And they did this by separating the parents. And then they gave kids names after themselves. They named the children after themselves, and they allowed us to learn their language. And we could not communicate with each other, so therefore we were cut off from our fathers. And once they cut us off from our fathers, they have destroyed us from being a people. Because all of our language, all of our culture, all of our political, social, and economical, and spiritual way of life was cut off as a people. And therefore, we did not have our own name, our own culture, nor our own language. Because the Almighty said they would wear a, or should I say, they would put a yoke of iron upon our neck until they destroyed us from being a people. Furthermore... This is why we have to talk to you in another tongue today. If we turn to the book of Isaiah, the 28th chapter. That is the book of Isaiah, the 28th chapter. We find that many of the servants of Yahweh today had to come with a stumbling lips attempting to teach you all who your Creator is, who your people are, what your language is and what your and where your land is located. We have to come with stumbling lips because this is not our language. English is a bastard language. It is not the original language of our people. And when a true servant or messenger comes to you attempting to give you this language, knowing that your lips and tongue was not made to articulate the various sounds that come from the English language, we come with stumbling lips as it is prophesied. In the book of Isaiah, the 28th chapter, the ninth verse, <clears throat> it reads, Who shall teach knowledge? And who shall make to understand doctrine? Then the Almighty said, Them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast. This is the only people that the Almighty can give all of his wisdom, all of his knowledge, and all of his understanding to. Because many of you older people that have been in modern Babylon or modern Egypt all of your adult life, you have been too brainwashed, too miseducated, too indoctrinated, too westernized to understand that our Creator is Yahweh and that he is our only God our only Savior and our only Redeemer. So the Almighty might have to allow you all to be destroyed or allow you all to wander through the wilderness 40 years as He allowed our parents beforehand to wander through the wilderness when we came out of the land of Egypt. Because at that time we had been too Egyptianized. We could not return to our Creator because we had been too brainwashed Therefore, the Almighty allowed all of the elders to wander in Egypt, or should I say in the wilderness, for 40 years until we died off. And then he allowed the babies to go into the land of Canaan because this 
is the only people that Yahweh is able to teach knowledge, to teach doctrine, and to give understanding, and that and they are they that are winged from the milk and drawn from the breast. Another scripture said, Raise a child in the way he shall go when he is young, and when he is old he shall not depart. Many of you all have been raised serving a false god, thinking that everything that you ever received came from Jesus, that all of your blessings came from Jesus. Therefore, Jesus was the only God that you have known, and it's very difficult for you to realize and to be taught this day that Jesus, nor Halle Selassie, nor any person, any other person that you have made your idol, is your true Savior. Our true Savior is Yahweh. He is the only one that can save and redeem our children and bring them back home. And therefore, as the Almighty said, He is the only one that we should submit our prayers to. Then we read in the 10th verse of the 28th chapter that it reads, For precept must be upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little and there a little. This is how the Almighty teaches His people. Precept upon precept, line upon line, doctrine upon doctrine, here a little and there a little. In other words, Yahweh comes in the volume of the book. And you will never read where any of our people were in captivity because of our disobedience. And the Almighty sent another God to save us. The only God that we ever known and will ever know that can save us is Yahweh. All other gods are imposters. All other gods are vanity. All other gods are idols. And when we worship them, we participate in idolatry. And this is the reason that our people are in the pitiful condition that they're in today in America. Then the Almighty states in Isaiah the 28th chapter, the 11th verse, it states, For with stumbling lips and another tongue will he speak to this people. And this is how the Almighty is speaking to you today. With stumbling lips and another tongue. That's the reason that we, his true servants, don't articulate this language as well as your enemies. And many of our people laugh because we make error in our speech, not considering the fact that this is not our original language and that we're coming to you in another tongue, bringing you the message of Yahweh, and therefore we come unto you with stumbling and stumbling lips as it is prophesied. Furthermore, if we turn to the book of Jeremiah, the fifth chapter, which is right in back of Isaiah, we find in the 19th verse that it is recorded, And it shall come to pass, when ye shall say, Wherefore does Yahweh Elohim do all these things unto us? In other words, it shall come to pass that you shall ask, Wherefore is Yahweh punishing us? Wherefore does Yahweh allow the, the tar and feathering, the hanging, the lynching, the discrimination, the exploitation, the subjugation that has occurred to us as a people to happen to us? Wherefore does he allow all these things to happen unto us? And what is our sin that we have committed? The Almighty then said, Brother Elisha, Then shall I answer them and say, As ye have forsaken me and served strange gods in your land, so shall ye serve strangers in a land that is not yours. That's the reason you're in America today is to serve strangers. And that's the reason you are serving strangers. That's the reason that the stranger is the head and you are the tail. That's the reason he's the lender and you are the borrower. That's the reason he is the landowner and you are the landless. And though many of you all think that during this great political upheaval that we have today, that one of our fellow brethren will be placed in the political office and will be able to eradicate 
all of the misjustices that, misjustices that have been healed upon us. But this is not true. The Almighty did not send us in this land to be free. He did not send us in this land to receive equal rights. He did not send us in this land to be part of the great melting pot. But rather you were sent in this land to serve your enemies. And regardless who is president, that fact will remain the same and your condition and your flight will remain the same. There will be people in the so-called political offices throughout America, both white and black, that will be able to alleviate certain of the misjustices that are healed upon you. But there will be nobody in the political arena that will be elected, white or black, that will be able, that will have the power to eradicate all of the misjustices, all of the discrimination, all of the exploitations that have been healed upon you because your punishment did not come from a man. Your punishment came from the true and living Elohim. And he's the only one that can take his, his wrath from off of you and bring you again unto your own land. It is he and it is he only and only by the way that he prophesied he would do it. So regardless how much you try to integrate, assimilate, and evaporate, you will remain a oppressed and afflicted people as long as you remain out of your own land. Furthermore, if we turn to the book of Hosea, the third chapter, It is recorded in the book of Hosea, the third chapter. I will start reading at the fourth verse. It says, For the children of Israel shall abide many days without a king, without a prince, without a sacrifice, without an image, and without an epoch, and without a terrapin. And yes, we have been abiding many hundreds of years hundreds of years without a king every nation on this earth has a king or a leader or a ruler or a chief of their own except us he said we wouldn't have a king a prince nor an image every other nation has some kind of an image some kind of flag some kind of totem pole you can go to the smallest little island in the remotest part of South or North America. And you'll see that any of those people have a rock, a stone, a tree, or something to denote or depict them as being a people that can identify them as being a nation, a people, a group, a society, except us. You, because you have turned your back on the true and living Elohim. We find in Hosea the third chapter, the fifth verse, that the Almighty states, Afterwards shall the children of Israel return and seek Yahweh the Elohim and David their king and shall fear Yahweh in his goodness in the latter days. So it's stated that in the last days the Almighty will return and save a remnant of his people and they will return back to Jerusalem. And they will not seek any strange gods then. Nowhere on our lips in that day will a name of Jesus or Halle Selassie or Allah or any other strange god be mentioned out of our lips. But in that day, the Almighty state, we will return and seek Yahweh our Elohim and David, who will be the Messiah or the King on earth. And there was only one king that the Almighty prophesied out of his lips that would come and rule his people and this earth, and that is David. And will David come, he will not be worshipped as a god. He will not be worshipped as our redeemer. He will not be worshipped as our savior. 
For as I stated, there is only one true king, one true savior, and one true redeemer, and that is Yahweh. And there is none else. But Yahweh will put David to be king on earth. So you see, there isn't any place at all for Jesus. And Jesus' name is not David. And David does not mean Jesus. Neither does David mean Halle Selassie, nor does Halle Selassie mean David. So all of those idols that you're now idolizing and wearing pictures of and having statues of, you might as well throw them in the fireplace because in the day of Yahweh's wrath, they will profit you nothing. Matter of fact, in that day, they shall be a witness to testify against you on how you have turned your back to worship the idols and turned your back from the true and living Yahweh. And the Almighty will testify and use these various pictures, these various statues, and these various trinkets and emblems and symbols and images to testify against you because of your iniquities. Furthermore, as I stated, Israel is a black nation. We know this to be true because according to the book of Exodus, the fourth chapter, one of the greatest kings or should I say one of the greatest rulers and one of the greatest prophets that ever lived was one of our great prophets and his name was Moses. Moses was a black man. We know this to be true by having you read the book of Exodus, the fourth chapter. That's the second book in the Holy Scriptures. It's called Exodus. And if we turn to the fourth chapter of Exodus, we find out that Moses... was sent by Yahweh into the children of Israel when they were in captivity in Egypt. But Moses did not want to go. He was reluctant and he was negligent in going because Moses thought the children of Israel would not believe that he was sent from the true and living Elohim. Therefore, we read in the Exodus, the fourth chapter, the first verse, that it reads as follows. And Moses answered and said, Behold, they will not believe me, nor hearken unto my voice, for they will say, Yahweh has not appeared unto thee. And Yahweh said unto him, What is in thy hand? And Moses said, A rod. And Yahweh said, Cast it on the ground. And he cast it on the ground, and it became a serpent. And Moses fled from before it. And Yahweh said unto Moses, Put forth thy hand, and take it by the tail. And he put forth his hand, and caught it, and it became a rod in his hand. That they may believe that Yahweh Elohim of their fathers, the Elohim of Abraham, the Elohim of Yishkak, and the Elohim of Yahakob has appeared unto thee. And Yahweh said, Furthermore, put now thy hand into thy bosom. In other words, the Almighty gave him two great signs. The first sign is when he threw his rod on the ground and became a serpent. He told him to pick it up by the tail, and it became a rod. And Almighty said he did this that the children of Israel may know that he, the God or the Elohim of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, had sent Moses unto them. And the Creator said, Furthermore, put now thy hand into thy bosom. And he put his hand into it, and behold, he put his hand into his bosom and took it out, and behold, his hand became as leprous as snow, meaning as white as snow. This was the color of Moses' hand, as white as snow. And he puts, and, and in the seventh verse it reads, And he said, Put now thy hand into thy bosom again. And he put his hand into his bosom again and plucked it out of his bosom. And it, behold, his hand had turned again as his other flesh. So in other words, when he stuck his hand into his bosom, 
and pulled it out, his hand was leveraged as white as snow. And the Almighty told him to put his hand into his bosom again. And behold, when he pulled his hand out, his hand became again as his other flesh. Now common sense would tell you that Moses was not a white man. If Moses was a white man, it would not have been a miraculous feat for a white man to put his hand into his bosom and pull his hand out and his hand was white. Even if it was white as snow, that could have been easily done by just merely keeping his hand in his pocket for a period of time. But you see, Moses must have been a black man because when Moses stood before the multitude and he put his hand into his bosom and when he took it out, his hand was white. And the multitude seen that. But when he put his hand into his bosom again and plucked it out, his hand became again as his other flesh. And the Almighty stated in the eighth verse, he said, It shall come to pass, if they will not believe thee, nor hearken unto the voice of the first sign, that they will believe the voice of the latter sign. Letting you know that it would have been great, a great enough feat for you or I to have seen a man's rod become a serpent. We would have immediately accepted the fact that he was sent from Yahweh. But Yahweh said, if they will not believe nor hearken unto the voice of the first sign, that they will believe and hearken unto the voice of the latter sign or the last sign. And the last sign or latter sign was when Moses stuck his hand into his bosom and his hand became white. And when he stuck it into his bosom again, it became as his other flesh. Now as you read between these lines, you see that Moses was apparently a very, very black man. Because this feat, this miraculous act, would not have been reviewed as miraculous as it was if he was not a black man. There was no way conceivable, believable, or imaginable that a white man could have pulled this act and it would have been deemed a miraculous feat. So you see, not only was Moses a black man, but all of the children of Israel was a black nation. The original children of Israel was not a white nation. The children of Israel was a black nation yesterday, and they are today. Some people may ask, well, isn't it conceivable that the children of Israel could have once been black, but now they turned white? Well, let's see if the Almighty had answered that question somewhere in the Holy Scriptures. We turn to the book of Jeremiah, the 13th chapter, and we find in Jeremiah, the 13th chapter, the 23rd verse, it reads as follows. Can the Ethiopian change his skin? It is a question asked. Can the Ethiopian change his skin? Or the leopard his spots? Can a leopard change his spots? Then may ye also do good which you are accustomed to doing evil. Then may ye also do good which you are accustomed to doing evil. In other words, when you ever see a day occur on this earth, that the Ethiopian begins to change his skin or a leopard begin to change his spots, then you can know that they that are accustomed to doing evil are now able to do good. But until that day occur, believe me, if Israel was a black nation, then they still are a black nation. Furthermore, I will show you the only description of a true and living Elohim that was ever recorded in your Bibles. And at this time, I would like to suggest 
that those of you all who have problems finding and keeping up with our verses in your regular Bibles, that you must get one of the older Bibles. Because these new Bibles have been changed, they have been altered, they have been uh, uh, mistranslated, they have been allowed to have the truth taken out of it. So much of the truth in the older books are not present in the new Bibles. That's the reason I suggest that you get an original Holy Name version of the Bible, get an original Holy Scriptures, get an original Sacred Name Bible, or get one of the older King James Bibles, and all of these truths are still in them. All of these truths. But in the newer Bibles, these newer translations, they are taking all of this truth out. All of these great truths that I'm again to point out to you, they are taking them out. And if any of you all have problems getting any of your older books, please call me at 531-9898. And I will try to make arrangements for you to get one of your better Bibles. But the only description that is mentioned of the Creator is recorded in the book of Daniel, the seventh chapter, the ninth verse, where it is stated, I beheld until the thrones were cast down, meaning all the earthly thrones, all the earthly governments. So you see right here in this verse, it lets you know that there will be no righteous king on this earth until Yahweh come back. For if there was a righteous king, a righteous government, a righteous administration, the Almighty would not have to cast down all the earthly governments and all of the earthly thrones. For it is recorded in Amos, meaning Daniel 7 and 9, that I beheld into the thrones were cast down, and the Ancient of Days did sit. And that is another name of the Creator. The Ancient of Days did sit, whose garments was white as snow, and the hair of his head like pure wool. So we see from this description, it is stated that Yahweh's hair is like pure wool. So, and if you want to know where a description of an angel is located at, you can turn to the book of Daniel, the 10th chapter, the 5th and 6th verse. It gives a vivid detail of an angel. So you see that Yahweh's people as a dark people with woolly hair. All of the angels that are described in this book are dark people with woolly hair. Well, since we have established the fact that Israel is a black nation, the original descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob are black, then who are the people who claim they are Jews today? Who are the people who claim they are the original Hebrew Israelites? Who are the people that claim they are the original descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob? Who are they? Where did they come from? These questions and more will be answered in our next program because we're going to prove beyond a shadow of a doubt who the original house of Israel is which we have already established and we are going to prove who are the people that claim they are the Jews who are the light complexion Jews who are the so-called white Jews who are the people that now inhabit the land of Israel who claim they are Israelis. Who are they? Where did they come from? Did the Almighty speak of them in the book of life? What did Yahweh say about them? Is this the fulfillment of the prophecies of Israel returning back home? Have the people that claim they are Jews, have they fulfilled any biblical prophecies at all? These questions and more will be answered next week. So I want everyone who is truly interested in this great truth to please stay tuned to our program next week. But I might add at this time that our time is getting short now. 
But if anybody have any questions or opinions that they would like to share with us about our program, please call us at 531-9898. Or either write to us at 3546 Montgomery Road in Evanston. Or visit our worship service every Sabbath day, which happens to be on the so-called Sabbath Saturday or the seventh day of the week. And we're located at 3546 Montgomery Road, and our meeting is at 3.30 every Saturday or every seventh day. But many of our people have been listening to us these various weeks, and they know that we are teaching the truth. They know that Yahweh is the only ruler of the heaven, the earth, and the universe. They know the words that I'm speaking is the truth, but still they have a great inability to contact us and to start studying that they might learn all of the words of Yahweh, that they might be able to turn from their iniquities and serve the true and living Elohim. I want to warn all of our brothers that's been watching our program that we love the fact that you watch us and you've been keeping up with us, but there's more required for you than to sit in your living rooms and in your bedrooms and watch our program and learn. You are obligated from the Creator to turn to Him with all your heart, all your soul, and all your might because the time is very short. So these last few weeks we have been teaching you all who the true Messiah is, who our true Savior is, who the original house of Israel is. So next week we are going to teach you who are the people that claim they are Jews. We're going to show you this in our Bible and identify everything that is happening with them in the Bible. So until next week, I love you very much. Shalom. Shalom, my name is Alicia Israel. I am the Moray, or spiritual teacher of the House of Israel, located at 3546 Montgomery Road. Today, I have the honor and privilege of introducing to many of you all, for the first time, the true word of Yahweh. Yahweh is is the creator of the heaven, the earth, and the universe. Yahweh is the Elohim, or God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And Yahweh is the Redeemer of Israel. And I would also like to inform you all this day that many of you all would like to think that the flight of the black man in America was merely a trivial or insignificant act that had escaped the all-seeing eyes of the Almighty. But that is not true. Everything that has ever happened, everything that is happening, and everything that will ever happen to us as a people is recorded in the Holy Scriptures of your Bible. We know this to be true by referring you to the book of Amos, the third chapter, the seventh verse, where it reads, Surely Yahweh Elohim will do nothing, but he reveals his secrets unto his servants, the prophets which means that the Almighty will never do anything at all except what he first reveals unto his servants, the prophets. So this day I'm going to reveal to you some of the various flights, some of the calamities, some of the blessings, and some of the cursings that shall befall our people here in America in this latter day. The other day, I happened to meet a young man who had stopped me and approached me 
and told me that he had been watching our TV program. He said, but ever since he first started watching our program, he's been confused. He's being, he, he was being confused because everything that we ever taught is quite the opposite of what he has been taught. He said the way that his mother and his father and his grandparents had raised him, I'm teaching him that all of that is wrong. And he says at this particular time, as a result of watching our program, that he's quite confused and he would really like to know the truth. And I told that young man, don't accept my word, but seek ye out of the book of life, which is the Old Testament of the Bible, and search the recorded words of Yahweh our Elohim, or the Lord our God, and see what the Heavenly Father had to say about these things. I would also like to bring to your attention this time that not only did I tell that young man that there are many things that he has been taught that now it is being revealed that they are lies, but I went so far as to tell that young man that practically everything that he had ever learned in this society is wrong. He has not been taught the divine truth about anything. And I must bring to your attention that there's two sides to everything. There's good and bad, black and white. Even nothing has another side because there is something. So there is a positive and a negative side to everything. And there is a positive and negative side even to the truth. And the truth that he was taught was a negative truth. The knowledge that he's learning today is a negative learning and a negative ideology and a philosophy. For instance, we were told as we came up in this society that the first law of nature is self-preservation. I would like to inform you that although you and I have been taught that all of our lives it is wrong and it is negative and to our destruction if we accept it. The definition of self-preservation means the instinct for individual preservation. And the instinct for individual preservation has been the total destruction of the black man in America. That is the reason why we are failing. That is the reason why our people refuse to unite. And our people, I find it very difficult for us to sit down and talk unity and brotherhood with one another as long as many of us have a full stomach. Because then we are not willing to listen to anyone we're not willing to concern ourselves with anyone, and we're not willing to jeopardize or sacrifice anything that we have for someone else as long as it might jeopardize self. Because we were taught that self-preservation is the first law of nature. But I would like you to know that the Almighty condemned self-preservation. Truly, self-preservation is not the first law of nature, but rather procreation or the preservation or propagation of one species is the first law of nature. But dealing with this self-preservation, the theory of self-preservation being positive, I would like, to, like you to know that that is the reason that many of our young women, many of our daughters are aborting their own babies because they believe that self-preservation is their first law of nature, that they should look for themselves. 
not for their descendants, not for their generations to come, not for their daughter's baby, not for the alleviation of their daughter's pain, but they believe that if they look for self-preservation, then they can buy more at the corner supermarket. They can get a new car or perhaps a new TV. They can buy more clothes or a bigger house because they're not concerned about feeding a child that has not came here yet. For they believe that the first thing they should focus upon is self and self-preservation. This is the reason that many of our young men today are selling drugs. As I talked to some of the drug pushers that I know, they brought to my attention that they were taught to first look out for self. And that if they did not sell drugs to their own brothers and sisters, that someone else would. And so since someone else would probably invariably sell the drugs to their brothers and their sisters, they believed that it was incumbent upon themselves to make the money because they were taught in our society by our parents that self-preservation is the first law of nature. But I want you to know that that, the, that ideology and philosophy is a false one and it is a dangerous one. Many of you all have been searching the Bibles for years and have not came to the realization of why your young men are selling drugs anyway. You have not come to the realization in this Christian society why your young men are killing one another, why they are oppressing one another, why the elders and the seniors and the ancient people in our society are afraid to go out of the houses at night because they are afraid that their great-grandsons and granddaughters would do something very, very evil and wicked to them. And more than likely, they would be right, because you have instilled in your sons and in your daughters that they must look out for self first. And self-preservation does not teach one to look out for his fellow brethren. I would like you to know that the worst thing a person can do is oppress his own kind, to hurt his own kind. And although many of the brothers and sisters that are pushing these drugs to one another, they have not yet considered that that is one of the worst sins in the Bible. It is recorded in the book of Proverbs, the 28th chapter. We find in the book of Proverbs, the 28th chapter, the third verse, it reads as follows. A poor man that oppresses the poor is like a sweeping rain which leaveth no food. I said a poor man that oppresses the poor is like a sweeping rain that leaveth no food. That is the worst thing under heaven as to see a poor person oppressing and afflicting another poor person. No one has a respect for that generation and for that type of mentality. It is total destructiveness. But our people, as long as this ideology manifest their minds that they must do everything for self first, they will always afflict, afflict their brothers and their sisters. But that is a great abomination, and the Almighty has condemned it. And as a matter of fact, I don't want you people that are in church, that are going to church every day, to condemn these young folks for what they are doing, because you are responsible for what they are doing. The Almighty brought to our attention in the book of Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter, if we turn to the book, the fifth book in the Bible, which is Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter, we find that the Almighty 
made an agreement with our fathers and with our great honorable leader Moshe or Moses. And he made a covenant with Moses that he would be a God or Elohim unto our people and that he would protect them and give them a land that floweth with milk and honey if they would only turn to him and keep his laws. But then the Creator brought and said in the 15th verse of the 28th chapter of Deuteronomy, it is recorded that the Creator of the heaven, the earth, and the universe made this recorded statement. But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken, and to the voice of Yahweh thy Elohim to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes which I command thee this day that all of these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. In other words, the Almighty warned our parents that if they would not hearken to keep his commandments, his statutes, and his judgments, that all of the curses that are written in the book of Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter, from the 15th to the 68th verse, would come upon us and our descendants. And it's needless to say that we did not hearken unto the voice of the Almighty. It is needless to say that we turned away from him and we broke the commandment that he warned us the most and that is the commandment that we should have no other God before him. And it's needless to say that we broke that commandment by setting up this Greek God that you might call by the name of Jesus. And it is a result of serving these false gods that you are now serving outside of the Almighty that all of these curses have come upon us and have overtaken us. And I'm going to point out now a few of the curses that the Almighty wrote in Deuteronomy 28 chapter that would afflict our people if we would not hearken unto his voice. He stated in the 17th verse, it reads, Cursed shall be thy basket in the store. And truly, our baskets are cursed in the store. Because we take our hard-earned money and buy the worst food that is imaginable and conceivable. And then we take this food home that we have bought with our hard-earned money and we feed this food not to our dogs, not to our cats, but we feed it to our own sons and daughters whom we claim that we love dearly. And as a matter of fact, the foods that we feed our sons and daughters. You can go to your supermarket today and you will not even see dog food made out of those ingredients. I have never seen a can of dog food that's made with pork meat. But rather all the dog food I've seen was made out of chicken parts, beef, and horse meat. But I've never seen anyone sensible try to feed a dog any swine or any pork. I've never seen a can of dog food that had hog in it. Because if they feed hog to the dog, it will not only cut down his longevity, it will dull his eyes take out his hair and make him become into poor health. So you bring this food that you bought with your hard-earned money into your homes. And as I said, you don't feed it to your dogs or your cats because it's not even sold to them, but you feed it to your children in the name of love. And what kind of foods are you feeding them? You give them greasy food that your leaders have called soul food. You break your neck going to restaurants to eat greasy, fat 
foods that are loaded with cholesterol and fats and grease. Foods such as hog flush and chitterlings and pig feet and pork chops and the pig guts and the pig skin and the pig nose. And matter of fact, our people eat everything on the pig except its hair. We love filth. We love grease. And we love it because the Almighty cursed us and told us that if we would not turn unto him and keep his commandments, that he would curse our baskets in the store. And as a result of cursing our baskets, he had to first give us a deliberate mind to make us believe that what we were buying was good. And so now you go smiling as you point to the butcher telling him that you want four of those type of feet and three of those type of tails and eight pieces of pork chop. And you feed this filth to your, your children because even of and as of this day, you still don't have the divine mentality to know that that food is harmful to them and that food would soon destroy them. But you feed it to them because your mind has been cursed. And as a result of your mind being cursed because you did not follow the laws of the Almighty, now your basket in the store is cursed. We also find in Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter, why our sons and our daughters are using dope. Why are they using drugs? And why are they destroying themselves and buying something with their hard-earned money that is taking them to an immediate early grade? Why won't they listen to anyone? Well, this is another curse that the Almighty put on your sons and your daughters because you would not hearken unto him. You went aside and began to serve these other strange gods, gods that we know not, these new gods that rose up, gods that our parents didn't know when they came out of the land of Egypt with a mighty and stretched out arm by the hand of the living creator. We're serving these newly formed gods such as Jesus. And as a result of turning to these gods, gods whom the creator has never mentioned out of his mouth, we are now cursed and our sons and our daughters are bearing the fruits of our iniquity. That is the reason they are buying, selling, and using drugs because they happen to be a recipient of a curse that the Almighty laid out in the book of Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter, the 28th verse, which reads, Yahweh shall smite thee with madness and blindness and an astonishment of heart. And that's exactly what has happened to your sons and your daughters today. You raised them up in lies and made lies your refuge. And as a result of these lies you raised them up in, they are now cursed with madness, blindness, and an astonishment of heart. And truly, as you know, someone must be mad to buy filth and put it in their system in the first place. They must be mad and they must be blind in order to hurt their own brothers and sisters and give them the same filth that they know has destroyed them. And many of you all this very minute say that you're worried about the Ku Klux Klan. Well, the Ku Klux Klans are smiling right now because you have done more harm to one another 
than the Ku Klux Klan's have done to you in the last 100 years. More black men and black girls have died at the hands of one another through these drugs and through this drug wars than all the lynchings that have taken place within the last hundred years. You are your worst enemy because you turned your back on the true and living Elohim. The true and living Elohim has now turned his back on you and his back on your sons and on your daughters and has now cursed them with madness and blindness and an astonishment of heart because you refuse to serve him. According to the book of Amos, the seventh chapter, we find in Amos, the seventh chapter, at the seventeenth verse, it reads as follows. Therefore, thus said Yahweh, Thy wife shall be a harlock in the city. And that's what your wives are today, many of them, should I say it, or harlots in the city, because according to the statistics of the United States government, or not the government, but a private firm, I heard the other day that they said 70% of all women have at least engaged in one adulterous affair in her lifetime which means that seven out of ten women that you're married to are going to slip around and be with someone else because they don't have the fear of the Almighty in them. You have taken them and raised them up in churches that taught that the law of Yahweh is done away with, that nobody could keep that law anyway. So instead of you having your sons and daughters reach for the stars, so if they fall, they still might land on the moon, you taught them don't even try to serve the Almighty. That it is impossible for anyone to keep those commandments anyway. And you told them that now they will live through another man named Jesus. And this other man named Jesus has borne their sins and prayed to price for their sins and all they have to do is ask him to forgive them and they shall be forgiven so in light of raising your sons and your daughters into a false philosophy and ideology and something as ignorant as that many of your wives commit adultery in the very churches you sent them to as a result of you turning your back from the Almighty. That's reading the Creator says in Amos 7, chapter the 17th verse, Therefore thus said Yahweh, Thy wife shall be a harlock in the city, and thy sons and thy daughters shall fall by the sword, and thy land shall be divided by lying. And thou shalt die in a polluted land, and Israel shall surely go into captivity forth of its own land. And we see those things are happening right now. Many of your wives, most of them in this Christian society, are now whores and harlocks. Your sons, and your, your sons and daughters are now beginning to fall by the sword. By the sword that they are raising at the neck of one another. By the swords of division. By the swords of strife. By the swords of dope. And the ability to want to push dope. They are now falling by the sword. And the line and the land that you're now living is divided by line. America every day is growing into two separate societies, a black one and a white one. And there will be great destruction to the black man in America 
as a result of how this land is being divided. And the Almighty said you would die in a polluted land. And history teaches us this day that there has never been a land on this earth that is as polluted as America is today. All of their drinking water is polluted to the extent that they can't hardly drink any water without the fear of catching cancer or being infested with worms or being infested with other deadly chemicals. Their water is polluted. Their vegetation is polluted because they did not allow the land to yield unto her its increase. The Almighty had us work the land six years and on the seventh year it rested. It had a chance to rejuvenate itself. But this land has been totally overworked and overtoxed with all type of man-made chemicals and toxins that he put in it to try to kill the little bugs. Now the, the vegetation and the foods that we eat is polluted. Mostly all the fish that you eat has mercury or other contaminants in it. All the meats that we eat are mostly cancerous causing. This is the most polluted land that has ever been under the sun. And this is the land that Israel was sent into to go into captivity. For the Almighty said ye should go forth into you, out of your land into captivity. And I might add, I would like anyone to call me and show me any other people that were taken out of their own land through the act of captivity and never returned home, even until this very day, except us, which are the black man in America and the other owls in which we had been scattered. We are the only people that are waiting to be redeemed, for we are the house of Israel. But we found that the Almighty said in the book of Amos 7:17 7, that we would die in a polluted land and that our sons and daughters shall fall by the sword. Furthermore, the Almighty mentioned something that's happening to us even until this very day. At this very moment, we find this scripture is being fulfilled. According to the book of Isaiah, the third chapter, it reads as follows. As for my people, children are their oppressors, and women rule over them, O oh, my people, they which lead thee cause thee to err and destroy the way of thy path. So we find and let us analyze what is just being said. The Almighty said, as for our people, children are their oppressors. And in every city in America, whether it's in New York, or California, Cincinnati, Cleveland, or Pittsburgh, the greatest oppressors of our own people it's not the police, not the Ku Klux Klan, not the skinheads, not the John Birch Society, but the greatest enemies that our people have are one another. And truly, we are being oppressed by our own children. There we are being oppressed by them because the Almighty has smitten them with blindness, madness and an astonishment of heart as he prophesied he would do in the book of Deuteronomy the 28th chapter the 28th verse and as it read in Isaiah 3 and 12 as for my children as for my people said Yahweh children are their oppressors and we know this to be a fact I don't have to be able to, uh, I don't have to speak on that very long because you all know that it is a fact. And furthermore, the Almighty said women rule over them. And yes, in most of the black families 
today in most of the black households today in America it's a woman ruling the household either because there is no man present or the few men that are present in our black families today refuse to stand up like men and be accounted for the men that are in our households are still allowing our enemies to rule their households. Everything they do is set up by what our enemies wanted them to do. We know this to be true by referring you to the book of Jeremiah, the fourth chapter. The Almighty says in Jeremiah, the fourth chapter, For my people is foolish. I said, for my people is foolish. They have not known me. They are saltish children, and they have none understanding. They are wise to do evil, but to do good, they have no knowledge. And yes, the, the men that are ruling the household, they are, they're wise to do evil. They are wise to allow their families to celebrate Christmas although the Almighty condemned it, although the Almighty never sanctioned it, although the Almighty referred to it as an abomination, although it is mentioned in the book of Jeremiah, the 10th chapter, the first to the third verse, where the Almighty condemns it, you are wise to allow your wives to bring these trees in the house and deck them with silver and gold. You are wise to do evil, but to do good, you have no knowledge. You're wise to allow your children to think that a bunny rabbit laid an egg and that you must celebrate Easter, although Easter is only mentioned once in the Bible, and there it is mentioned as a paganistic holiday. You're wise to allow them to celebrate the 4th of July. Even until this very day, you don't have any independence. I said, although you and your family cook pig ribs, shoot firecrackers, and act a fool on the 4th of July, even of this very day, my brethren, you have no independence. Even though you sit up with your wives on the so-called New Year's, which is January the 1st, which is the middle of winter, you have no knowledge that the only new year that the Almighty spoke of in the entire Bible is mentioned in Exodus, the 12th chapter, where he lets us know that New Year's is in the month of April, or the last of March, and not in the middle of winter, as you have been taught. And as I've always said, the biggest criticism that I have for my people is this that we have relied on the same people that have mistreated us to teach us. And common sense would tell you that if a man would not treat you right, he would not teach you right. And all of your teachings have come from your enemies. And the Almighty told the world that if they were to learn, they could only learn from Israel. Israel was the only nation that was given to be the light of the world. But you don't learn and receive your instructions from Israel, which is and always had been a black nation. According to the book of Songs, 147th chapter, we find recorded in the 19th and 20th verse these divine words. It says, He sheweth his word unto Jacob, his statutes and his judgments unto Israel. He has not dealt so with any nation, and as far as the judgments, they have not known them. Praise ye Yahweh. So right here, in no uncertain terms, in words that you can clearly understand, the Almighty lets us know through his infallible words that the only people he had ever given his holy divine word to was Israel. And Israel is the only nation that could teach 
His laws, His statutes, His covenants, His commandments, His judgments, and His precepts, and His testimonies to others. They are the only people, for the Almighty reveals that they are the only people in which He gave His word, His statutes, His laws, and His commandments to. So, therefore, it is needless for you to go to the Gentiles as you have been going to learn the word of Yahweh. And that's exactly how foolish our people have been. They have been going to the Gentiles, their enemies, to learn the word of Yahweh when the word of Yahweh was never given to the Gentiles. And in the last day, the Almighty did not say we would follow a Gentile to seek his word, but he said the world would follow, would run, and seek after him that is a Yehudanite, or one that you might call Jew, to seek his word. We find in the book of Zechariah, the 8th chapter, starting at the 20th verse, it reads as follows. Thus said Yahweh. Now you notice it did not say, thus said Peter. Or thus said Paul. Because the Almighty has never sent a prophet to come here and tell you what Peter and Paul said. But rather what thus said Yahweh. And it reads, thus said Yahweh of hosts. It shall yet come to pass that there should come people and the inhabitants of many cities and the inhabitants of one city shall go to another saying let us go speedily to pray before Yahweh and to seek Yahweh of hosts will I go also yea many people and strong nations shall come to seek Yahweh of hosts in Jerusalem. He said they shall come to Jerusalem and to pray before Yahweh. Then according to Zechariah the 8th chapter, the 23rd verse, it reads, Thus said Yahweh of hosts, In those days it shall come to pass that ten men shall take hold out of all languages of the nation, shall even take hold to the skirt of him that is a Yehudanite or a Jew, saying, We will go with you, for we have heard that Yahweh is with you. So you see, my friends, here, again, the Almighty reiterates on the fact that all nations must follow a Yehudanite or an Israelite. There's nowhere in the Bible that the Almighty said we would have to seek his word from a Frenchman or an Englishman or a Japanese or a Chinese or a Russian or an Englishman. As a matter of fact, the Almighty only gave his laws, statutes, covenants, and commandments to Israel and Israel only is the only nation that will teach his laws, statutes, covenants, and commandments to the world. As it is mentioned in the book of Isaiah, the ninth chapter, the second verse, it reads as follows. The people that have walked in darkness have seen a great light and they that dwell in the valley of the shadow of death, upon them has the light shined. I read again, Isaiah 9 and 2. The people that walked in darkness have seen a great light, and they that dwell in the shadow of death Upon them has the light shined. And yes, the light is shining on Israel. And all people, nations, and languages. 
that wish to learn the true word of the Almighty Yahweh can abandon these cults that they're going to today. All of them, whether they might be Baptist, Methodist, Lutheran, Pentecostals, Episcopalian, Seventh-day Adventist, Jehovah Witness, Mormon, Quaker, Christian Scientist, you must abandon these cults today and seek the true word of Yahweh while it is yet to be found. Because you cannot find the word of Yahweh in any of these man-made cults. The Almighty did not give his, his word to the other nations, to the other languages, nor to the Gentiles. But his word was given to Israel, and Israel only can lead the world to righteousness. You cannot go seeking the divine words of Yahweh and another church from another people that are not mentioned in the book of life. But as I've said, the people that have walked in darkness have seen a great light, and they that dwell in the valley of the shadow of death, upon them has the light shine. And furthermore, we find in the book of Isaiah, the 60th chapter, it states again in Isaiah, the 60th chapter, the first verse, Arise and shine, for the light of Yahweh is risen upon thee. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth. And yes, darkness is covering the earth right now. And gross darkness the people, meaning not only will the world be in a total state of ignorance, but the Almighty's chosen people would be in gross darkness, devil-blinded, if you might say. But Yahweh shall rise upon thee, and his glory shall be seen upon thee. And then Isaiah 60 and 3 reads, And the Gentiles shall come to thy light, and kings to the brightness of of thy rising. So it lets us know that all the kings, all the Gentiles, must come to us and into the brightness of our rising. For we are the people of the covenant, and we are the people that is to reveal this great law to you. Furthermore, we find in the book of Ecclesiastics, the third chapter, the fourteenth verse, it reads as follows. I know that whatsoever Elohim does, it shall be forever. Nothing can be put to it, nor anything taken from it. And Yahweh does it that we might fear him. So I'm only showing you these things that you might know that they are the true words of Yahweh and Yahweh changes not. He changes not. The wind changes, the season changes, the weather changes, but your creator never changes. And although your leaders that are wise to do evil, but as the creator said, to do good, they have no knowledge. These same leaders will tell you, don't, don't, don't go by that, what that young man is saying, because that's in the Old Testament. And that Old Testament has been done away with. And now we're living by the words of another God. And that other God's name is Jesus. And Jesus' words superseded that other father. But I would like you to know that that is a lie. And the Almighty cursed anyone that would believe that lie. For the Almighty says in the book of Jeremiah, the 17th chapter, the 5th verse, 
Thus said Yahweh, Cursed is the man, or cursed be the man that trust, that trust in man, and make it flesh his arm, and whose heart departed from Yahweh. So the Almighty said, Cursed be anyone that trusts in anyone other than himself. And I would like to ask you so-called black historians that are in our audience, I would like to ask all of you people that have just came from the black family reunion that was held in Cincinnati the other day, I would like you to consider this question and call me at 5 three one nine eight nine eight area code five one three and let me know this answer why would a man that's holding you down why would a man that have brought your descendants or your ancestors over in America in slave ships stacked in slave ships like sardines laying on top of one another, urinating on top of one another, not hardly standing up for days at a time. Why would a man that has laws in most of your states stating that if a black man is caught reading a book, he would have his hand cut off or he would be killed? Why would they beat a black man to death for reading a book? Why would they beat a black man to death for speaking in his original language? Why would they beat a black man to death by attempting to communicate with his God? Why would a man that has so much hate, so much animosity against you, so much destructiveness in his heart toward you and your people, why would a man of that mentality turn you on to Jesus if Jesus was truly your Lord and your Savior? Does it seem logical that a man that's attempting to hold you down, to keep you as his slave, would then give you the knowledge to call on your Savior that is able to save you that is able to unite you with one another, that's able to strengthen you, don't you know, my brethren, that the only reason that your enemy gave you a God named Jesus is because he knew that a God named Jesus could not save you and that the God named Jesus was not your true Savior, and that a God named Jesus would only keep you in captivity. There's nowhere in the New Testament, my brethren, that there's a verse that teaches you to unite and fight against your enemies. There's not a verse in the New Testament that tells you that you as a people, that it is incumbent and necessary for you all to destroy the oppressor and his oppressing conditions that he has bethorn upon you. All that book teaches you is that you must love your enemy, that you must love them that despitefully use you, that if your enemy hits you on one cheek, turn ye the other, that if your enemy take you to the court and sue you and take away your coat, give him your cloak also, that if your enemy compel you to go with him one mile, go with him twain. That if you fight against your, your master, you would only anger Jesus. And that Jesus suffered and died for you. And now in order for you to inherit his kingdom, which is somewhere in the sky, that you must suffer wrongfully at the hands of others as he did. That is the only reason that you was given this slave mentality and that slave religion is because it is a religion that would hold you down even as you are being held this very day. 
I appeal to you all to seek the true word of Yahweh. Start in the beginning of the book and read. Read about the Almighty. Don't allow your foolish leaders to tell you you're not going by that and that you must now go into the back of the book. That type of ideology and philosophy is one that has destroyed our people. That philosophy of serving a strange God other than Yahweh is one that has our people in captivity this day. Before I close, I would like to cite one scripture for you all that believe that you must serve Jesus. According to your Bible in the book of Hosea, 13th chapter, the fourth verse, it reads as follows. For I am Yahweh, the Elohim, out of the land of Egypt. And thou should know no other God or no other Elohim but me, for there is no Savior beside me. And I would like you to know that these gods that you know, I don't know. You're much too smart for me. I know no God but Yahweh. I know no Elohim but Yahweh. I have no Savior but Yahweh. For Yahweh told us in the book of Hosea, the 13th chapter, the 4th verse, that we are to know no God but Him. For He said beside Him there is no Savior. And that meant Halle Selassie or Jesus. There is no Savior but Yahweh. I want you to read that verse in Hosea, the 13th chapter, the 4th verse, and pray on it. Pray on it and see if what your enemies have been teaching you is consistent with the word of God or the word of Yahweh or is it only consistent with something in a book that they have made up. Our time is running out but if anybody have any questions, comments please call me 531-9898 531-9898 area code 513 and until next week I love you very much. Shalom.